So welcome everyone come to my talk and uh, I'm Wilson Wang, I'm from ByteDance, I'm a research engineer uh, uh, in the Infra Lab and today I'm going to talk about the uh, WebAssembly in BiFast. So BiFast is a uh, or internal like fast uh, platform the, uh, like for uh, for like uh, ByteDance environment but I mean there are like it's very similar to uh, other like the you know like the fast platform but today I'm going to talk about something like details that we uh, implement a different from like the other uh, fast platform and especially about the uh, the places where we use WebAssembly. So the talk, it will uh, be three parts. For the first, we will talk about our legacy, like the fast environment. And then after that, we will talk about the how we use uh, WebAssembly in our current fast environment. And finally, we will talk about our in progress of the research about our like uh, next generation uh, WebAssembly based uh, fast system. Okay, and I finally, I will give some demo. So yeah, uh, let's start. And first, I will talk about the past, like the past, like what we, uh, what was there before we start using WebAssembly. Okay, so there are like it, uh, in our legacy by fast architecture, we have two kinds of like the functions. Like one is native function, another one is uh, event function. So for the native function, it's container based. <coughs> you order, uh, like use their customized uh, images. Uh, and like, in order to like run their function, like the the when the container start, they need to have like uh, have their start .sh, like uh, script to start all the the uh, services. And then after that, their code need to listen to uh, like on a particular port. For example, like for HTTP services, they, they need to listen on the port 80 uh, for incoming requests. And the second about event function. So the event function is a little bit different from the native function. We have a bunch of uh, common, like, like sh shared common images. For example, for like Python, JavaScript, or other, many other different runtimes. And the user just needs to provide their uh, business logic code. And then like we will use these common images to start their, like the, the uh, event function. And in this case, like the user code will be like much, like their, their code will be much smaller than the, like the, uh, native function. So the parts with these uh, two different kinds of functions that they are flexible. Uh, they are flexible because they, uh, we can provide uh, diff like a user with uh, like different types of workloads, and it's easier to migrate their container-based microservices uh, workload to fast because we have a lot, like a lot of uh, like the container-based microservices. They are either using Go or different other uh, like languages, and then the, when they want to uh, migrate their like the the the, wor the workload to our fast system, then they, we need to f give them away so that they can, you know, so this will, this process can be more smooth, uh, like more smooth. Okay, the cons ways, uh, these two functions that, well, for the container code star, it's one of them, it's very slow, right? So it, it, uh, you need some time, uh, like wait some time to, for it to get started. And uh, another one is that the container images are uh, usually are very, uh, usually are large. And uh, for the next slide, I'm going to talk about the optimizations we did to the legacy workload. So there are three, uh, you, know, you know, like there are three major uh, container code star optimizations that uh, we can find in the industry or in the academic er area. And the first thing is that we change uh, Kubernetes like part creation from declarative to imperative. So you can think of like, uh, so in this way, we can avoid a lot of like the, the you know, like the uh, back and forth, the data update and then observation, uh, all these observations that are happening in between so that we can save time. That's the first one. And second one is using like one pool, using one pool to uh, speed up like the uh, initialization. And this is also co very common use. And the last one, it's not very common, but many companies are starting using it. So it's like uh, you can snapshot your port, uh, like container processes, and later when uh, like at a particular like initial stage, and then later uh, recover from the snapshot. So in this way, like the for large containers, so like it can uh, uh, like it can start up um, faster. Okay, and uh, next slide. Okay, so for the, for these optimizations, there are limitations. And the first thing is that the cold star optimization, you know, like there's always a gap between different isolations. So for the VM, like when we start uh, like a VM, there are like, you know, we have VM enter, VM exit, 
And these costs cost are more than 10 times high, uh, higher the cost of uh, usually like a system call, which is commonly used by uh, Linux container. And the second one is that the system for system call, is the cost is also more than 10 times higher of the simple user space like call or jump instructions. And so this, this is gap, like it's, we cannot avoid. And because of this, and then there's always a gap between, you know, like the, uh, VM and container and then, you know, a different other isolation. So how do we start like fast functions with latency at uh, like the millisecond level or some millisecond level? And uh, so we are thinking uh, here, like probably we need a sandbox environment that can like, you know, mainly use like a, a call or jump instructions. And uh, there are like, the, we have two choices. One is just unikernel, another one is WebAssembly. And then we've been like uh, thinking about unikernel uh, for like uh, quite some time, but still like the, there are many, you know, like the uh, limitation with the unikernel that we, uh, you know, we make us like, hesitate to adopt the unikernel solution. And finally we found like the WebAssembly and we believe that it will be much uh, like, uh, convenient for us in our environment, then finally we, uh, cho uh, we chose WebAssembly. Okay. And for, okay, now we are talking about the present, uh, what, the, what we have like right now in the, the, as a like, lightweight WebAssembly worker. So uh, we introduced the WebAssembly worker for our BiFast system. So what is that? It's a new like fast worker based on WASM time. So like other components in the fast system, like gateway or like all other agents, they are very similar to you know the, com the common uh, fast systems. But in our case, we actually added like a uh, fast worker based on WASM time. So what's the difference? It's uh, Rust based. We use Tokyo uh, async framework to make a best make best use of the micro core uh, multi core environment. And also for each incoming request, the uh, WebAssembly sandbox is either uh, created or reused from the cache. And the, we use uh, like the user WebAssembly functions uh, pre-compiled ahead of time so that we can, you know, like that it can run faster and also it, we can uh, start it faster. And also like uh, we have another service provider framework which gives the advanced features and the call capabilities to the user code. So in the next slide, I'm, I'm going to talk about what is a uh, service provider framework. Okay, the service provider framework, you can think of it as uh, like a uh, uh, micro kernel design or message passing you know, design. So uh, uh, why do we need to, uh, when do we need to implement it? So there are like, you know, many features like IOU ring or even FD, like these are like, uh, you know, uh, used by many of our legacy workloads. But uh, in WebAssembly, actually, it's, they are not pro they are not uh, directly provided. So we need to use them. Then we need to find a way to you know uh, uh, to provide these features. So what we did, like we uh, add the service provider framework. It provide like provide the host calls with backend support to user WebAssembly functions. And the current implementation that we have for the uh, for this like backends are like KVSore, service discovery. HTTP request and response, and also message queue. And definitely we also provide something uh, like IOU ring uh, through this uh, inter interface, but uh, I'm not going to cover these details in, uh, like, uh, in my talk because there, there are so many, de uh, there, uh, I can't cover them in, like, in a single talk. And there are a few things work in progress because this service provider framework, it came uh, way before the component model. And then, you know, in the, in the uh, community, then they propose the common model and also uh, other, uh, like, uh, uh, other new features to uh, WASM time. Then we decided finally, you know, we might need to investigate like the new design, how we can adapt like the common model and to improve our service provider framework. And also, we are thinking, you know, uh, uh, integrate the Dapper in our uh, implementation so that there uh, they will be something like from the community, uh, like we can directly uh, uh, include it, you know, uh, so to improve or like improve or like the service provider framework. 
And, uh, but there are uh, pain points with all Western Walker. So there are two main uh, pain points that we, uh, we need to like, resolve in our uh, Western, like, you know, Western Walker. So the first thing is that uh, we have like increasing number of like small WebAssembly modules and they are small, they are divided and they have dependency between each other. So, and also like for the different uh, Western mo modules, they have different versions. And all these messing up together and then we get some, uh, we get an enterprise at hairball. So they, they, they uh, you know, like they have dependency. And then they are, uh, the develop for the developer, they are uh, productivity greatly, greatly affected. And also the second thing is that it's hard to identify and resolve scalability and performance issues. We need to speed up, uh, up the cascade request, for example, uh, service A called service B. And then how do, you know, like the, how do we uh, make uh, speed up these uh, requests? And also we need to find the uh, you know, application bottleneck, like for, for, for example, like application uh, A called application B. And then, you know, like uh, uh, if the application B is like, running slow, then it will uh, uh, slow down the whole uh, request. Okay, so how do we solve these two problems? And we have a partial solution. And this is what we currently have, but it, they, they didn't solve the, uh, to, didn't solve, uh, totally solve the problem. Uh, like there are two solutions. One is work service, another one is combined deployments. I'm going to talk about this. Oh, I'm going to talk about these uh, two uh, like the, uh, improvements that we have. Okay, so the first thing about, mm, Let me, let me unplug it and test it again. Okay, so the, for the worker service, uh, it manage and deploy function in groups with like the manifest files describing the function specs. And uh, so the, so, uh, the work service, we support mixing WebAssembly function and other like language runtime like functions. And uh, for the different like the functions, like they when they communicate with each other, we use the IDL or you know you can use JSON to uh, describe the worker function interface for a request. The IDL you can think of like a port above or something equivalent. And we use uh, Kubernetes sim similar concept to organize the functions. You know like we uh, so the developer they write they are like the YAML files. The YAML files contain something like deployment service group snapshot, and then use these to describe the relationship between the functions and how they get deployed. So the, there are also like uh, pros and cons with uh, this uh, working service. So uh, like it's a provide high level of uh, like solution to manage the group of functions, but uh, uh, like but still it needs a lot, lot of extra like efforts to manage the you know like uh, manage these uh, application deployments. People need to write their YAML files and then they need to organize somewhere so that they, uh, so that the platform can retrieve these uh, YAML files. Okay. And second, uh, the improvement that we did is combined, uh, combined deployments. You can see from the, the graph here, so when the request comes, then it will first come to function A. If function A needs to you know, talk to function B, then it will, uh, in the original design, function A will forward the request to gateway, and gateway will do a reverse proxy and send the request to another worker, which will bring up the uh, function B and mm, return re result. And this is uh, you know this the, the two and three is totally necessary if we can bring up the you know the the destination destination function on the same host. So that what we did is that for the combined deployments, we actually uh, when the function A needs to call another function, and this function can be uh, uh, bring up uh, can bring up like on the same host, then we will uh, simply just uh, bring up the uh, function B on the same host and process the request and return the result. So that like in this case, the original remote requests become like local requests. Then, uh, then we improve the performance. And uh, we can see the result here. 
In this case, it's uh, we are we are testing using JavaScript runtime on top of uh, web uh, like using uh, on top of WebAssembly, and with the runtime that using we are using is actually Spider Monkey. So Spider Monkey uh, generally its performance is like higher than QuickJS. And the results uh, show that the average and long lat uh, tail latency are greatly reduced for small size traffic. You can see here the for the remote requests usually you know average around like uh, 10 to 20 uh, milliseconds, and then finally we will re reduce it to like two or three uh, milliseconds. But as the size of the request like uh, increase, then you know we couldn't get uh, a, lo a lot of improvement for it. But still, we for the long tail latency, we can see uh, you know the, the difference. Okay, now the last part we are talking about the upcoming feature, the next generation fast system investigation. So, like we discussed about the solutions that we have, but uh, they are not total, uh, they are not like for the uh, combined deployments and also for the worker service, they are not solving the problem, uh, like to not totally solving the problem. So, what we uh, can do to, you know, like to further improve it and also uh, like uh, give the developer a better, uh, like uh, the developing experience. Okay. Now let's talk about the service weaver. So service weaver, uh, like for uh, like uh, in their paper, this, they suggest like three things that are par uh, probably can be used to improve the uh, cloud uh, application development. The first is monolithic application development is important. So like for the developer, they can uh, develop a single uh, like the uh, application binary, and later you know this will uh, this will be more convenient for the developers. And the second thing is that the, you need to distinguish between applications like physical and logical boundary. So like uh, people write a component, but this component, like they are, uh, they are logical boundary, but not, they are not necessary uh, the physical boundary when uh, in, in the actual uh, like the running environment. And the third thing is that uh, a distributed like smart runtime is needed for auto optimization, auto scaling, and also for debugging. Well, uh, this is service weaver actually uh, for only for Go. But, uh, so for our case, we want different languages that can uh, work together so that we need uh, like force item, the course language interoperability. So how do we do this? Like how do we uh, like achieve goal and like, you know like the, and do all these uh, four items? So our answer is like Wasman Ray. Okay, so how many how many of you guys know like Ray or uh, use Ray before? <laughs> okay, so I'll give a short intro introduction about Ray. So on Ray's official uh, website, they say that uh, Ray is an open source unified compute framework that makes it easy to scale AI and Python workloads from reinforcement learning to deep learning to tuning and model serving. It's very long, right? And actually, from uh, like Jan Stovica, he said that Ray is a distributed computing ecosystem as a service. So uh, here is one example of uh, how you write Ray code. So you you know in the uh, using Python, you, you can write a function. And here, the function square actually return the square of the the, the 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 input value, right? And you use the decorator to like read dot remote to uh, decorate this uh, function. Then later, when you call square dot remote, it actually uh, actually this execution is uh, like distributed by is distributed by the uh, Ray framework so to somewhere else inside the cluster so that you get you just get the the the, ret the return value are the futures and later when you call Riga you actually you get the actual value for these uh, like executions so that's how like Ray looks like Okay, so next one I will talk about the Ray uh, architecture. So the Ray, it has one, like usually one hand node and multiple worker nodes. So the, the, the hand node and worker node, they form uh, like a Ray cluster and so that you later can submit your job to the uh, Ray cluster and, uh, and, run, like, and run the, your, like the, your, log, uh, your logic. And the, there are two things. One is like, uh, or two important concepts in Ray. One is task, another one is actor. So the task is stateless and the actor is stateful. 
In the case of Python, so like the Ray support you know, uh, Python and also Java. And in the case of Python, you can think of like function as like uh, uh, stateless and the class actually stateful. So when you execute a function, it's uh, when uh, during the execution uh, inside the recluster, it actually stateless. So each time when you call it, it actually you know uh, the result. Does not uh, depend on the previous uh, uh, previous call, and for the you know Java uh, for the Python classes, when you have like uh, instance, then later when you call its method, it actually uh, it's actually an actor, it's stable. So each time when you call uh, like a uh, uh, class uh, method uh, in Ray, and then it actually depends on the uh, previous state. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about our Vasimon Ray architecture. So there are two parts, uh, one is execution and scheduling. For execution, we add a new Ray Vasim worker. Uh, so what it uh, so what it does is that it's different from the fast worker. So the, the here the worker is actually the uh, re worker. So the for the re worker uh, it handles WebAssembly specific task actor execution requests. So that when, uh, when you, uh, so that when you submit your code, it actually your code actually execute on these re Wasm workers. And uh, the runtime we use actually it is uh, Wasm Match. So the reason we are using Western Magic is that uh, our code uh, actually is, uh, like the, it's the project is actually uh, using the Bazel to build, and then we had some <laughs> really hard time integrating with Western time because like the, with you know like the, when you are building them like the, for the uh, for the cargo, then you know it, there are a lot of uh, problems with it. Uh, for example, like the when you, the cargo when you build the Western time, there are some scripts that you are running during the compile time. Which is very hard to integrate with uh, uh, with the Beta project, so that's why we choose Western Match. And also for the Western Match, it provides more featured plugins, and which was very helpful for us. And later I will show one example of YCNN, like how do we do the inference? And actually, uh, we need to use uh, we need to use it using the uh, Western Match. And the second uh, Ray host calls. So for the Ray, we actually export them uh, like as Ray host calls, so that later different languages when they compile to WebAssembly, they can use these Ray host calls to uh, execute like the uh, execute task or actors. And uh, for the scheduling, the the Western uh, runtime actually depends on Ray to schedule the task uh, and actor executions. And also, we will uh, we use like Ray to profile its execution uh, like result and improve the like the function scheduling strategies. And we can also uh, depends on the scheduling result. We can scale uh, the task actors to improve the throughput. Okay. Here I'm going to show one example of Wasimon Ray. Uh, <clears throat> you can see the, the code on the right side. So we have a function called taskFunk, which is basically doing some calculation and re uh, return the result. So the uh, from line uh, uh, 18 to 20, we're actually calling it locally. So it's just we, uh, so we call the function and get a result. And in order to use Wasimon Ray, what, what we, we need to make some changes. So from line 27 to line 32, we these are actually uh, how to use uh, Wasimon Ray to execute a function. So the line 28 in line 28, we call Ray. We give a function pointer, and also we also give a buffer which will return the future. And later, uh, at line uh, 30, which we'll, we'll do, we'll uh, call, we'll wait for the uh, like the future result, and then uh, populate the result, the actual result, then the printing it out. So, yeah. And uh, next thing I will go, sh I'm going to show a demo, like the the the, the like previous call uh, demo, and also a mobile net uh, inference demo. Okay, uh, here is uh, because I I have like problem accessing my uh, like dev environment inside or in, uh, enterprise environment. So I'm going to show like a recording. So what I did uh, to run like to run the example code. And this uh, the first thing is actually we need to compile the uh, the array. 
So this command is, is, is just used to uh, compile the ray and including or Wasimon ray. Yeah, it will, uh, you know, like for the ray, if you want to build it uh, from the scratch, then it will take a long time. But this is, since we already have some uh, compiled before, so it would uh, be, it will be very short. Okay, then after this, uh, what we do is actually we need to uh, run the example here. Uh, let me, uh, we'll co compile the code. So here we actually, uh, let me see, oh uh, yeah. So in the, under the example directory, we actually uh, build the example WebAssembly code. And finally, it is the, uh, let me see, the execution. Yeah, here, here's just the command, it'll be long. So later we, you know, we will improve it. But right now you can see that here, like it's called warrior. So that's something that we uh, use to, uh, like to, to, to load the WebAssembly code and execute it uh, inside the Ray environment. Yeah, this is uh, it's trying to connect to the Ray cluster, which is already uh, running. Okay, you can see here. So this one is actually calling locally, uh, directly like uh, here, and then we get a uh, we bring in the result. And then later when we call it remotely, actually uh, like the call the uh, ray, uh, I mean call the ray to execute the function. Then we also get get the same result. Yeah, this is uh, the code we shown here. That's exactly like we are exactly uh, executing the sa uh, exactly the same code. Okay, then after that, it will, uh, like, say, uh, like terminate the code and also terminate the recluster. Okay. And uh, for the uh, second demo, I'm going to show, uh, like, WestMH mobile net inference demo. And this, thing, uh, th uh, this part of the code is not actually executing the WASM, like, uh, executing Ray code, but uh, we are here to demo, you know, like, the, how it is, uh, it is uh, how it is easy to, uh, as like, to run inference using WASMH. And you know, future we are, we want to do some further uh, improvement to it so that we can actually run the inference uh, distributedly. But uh, right now, I'm just going to show the how we run the or inference. Here, this is an example. So you can get it from WestMatch and see the WestNN example. And uh, what it does is just uh, you give uh, like uh, image, and then later it will identify what is there inside the image. Okay, here in this case, we are running uh, the, let me see if I can. Yeah, these are the commands that we use to uh, run the, uh, run the like, uh, inference, and we need to give an argument. Like, we also, uh, like, argument is, like, uh, is shown here. So with uh, the model, like, the, like the, the model file, and also the input image. So the because it's, it, because it's running on like the CPU, so generally uh, like it is a little bit slow. Here I will probably speed up a little bit. Yeah, here you can see it's executing. It's uh, it loaded the model and start executing. Yeah, I need to. Okay, you can see the result here. It identified the banana inside the image. You can uh, later you can get it from the West Match West an example. You can run it locally. So this is uh, yeah, it is very easy to execute. You can just run it using West Match. Okay. Now uh, 
I will talk about the, the uh, in progress and future work. So while we're planning to we're planning to run Llama 2 uh, inference based on like Llama 2.c, and the, uh, because it's pure like it's purely written in C. So later we we are uh, we are like a work in progress to uh, uh, make it running on Western Mount Ray. So uh, later you know when you run uh, this uh, inference, it actually can run uh, distributely. So you can have data uh, inside the cluster uh, inside the cluster on different nodes. And the second thing we are doing is that we are, uh, because you can see the code, it's still, it's not, uh, uh, it's not like it's very straightforward yet. So later we want to see if there are any uh, way we can further improve the, uh, the West Mount Ray so that it, uh, it will be easier for the developer to take advantage of the uh, Ray underneath. And also, later, uh, we are planning to like uh, do uh, like Ray SDKs for different languages to support like Wasim, uh, to support Wasim on Ray. And right now, it's we, we mainly support C and C C++, and later we want to add like the JavaScript support and also the like uh, Rust support. And the repo is here, and also we have like the proposal is already accepted by the Ray uh, like by by the like the Ray community. Okay, thank you for attending my talk. And uh, any other uh, any questions? Yes, please. This one. So this uh, okay, that's a good question. So like, how many of our services are running on uh, like Wasm? So uh, right now it's inc uh, it's like the mo most of our like workloads still like a legacy workload. They are like either Go or some other like for for example Java. And we see uh, a portion of our like the users like switching to WebAssembly. These people are mainly you know like they, they need to process some like the message queues. Usually, you know, message queue users, and also some of the uh, like the front end, like, you know, like the services they want to use WebAssembly because the WebAssembly uh, it can start very uh, very quickly and compared to container, that's the like the first advantage that people you know the or the first reason the top top first reason the uh, people switch to WebAssembly. Yeah. So this is a different, uh, you know, uh, this is a different size of the request. So first one is one k, one k data size, and then you know this uh, is the request from uh, function A to function. Uh, you can see it here, like function A to function B, and that's uh, like size of the data. So the like the top left one is actually with the one k size data, and uh, if we go to the bottom, that will be like a uh, like a larger size data. You can see here with the maximum we have like four megabytes. And we have some data missing there, but uh, yeah. So right now, uh, you can see that when we have like smaller data, uh, because we are uh, running the destination function on the same host, it is very quick, and because we have no like uh, network latencies, and it will be a few mi uh, few like millisecond to uh, for the data uh, for the uh, for the re uh, to get a result. And but if, if we, you need to like uh, use a gateway you know, for the request to gateway, and then uh, bring up the destination function somewhere else, then you can see that the generally it's much lo the t latency is much longer, and also for the long tail latency, it can reach more than like 200, uh, 200 uh, milliseconds. Yeah. Uh, we have like I mentioned uh, the uh, there are two like we we uh, let me see if I have it here, so mm, okay so uh, let, let me uh, we have like the uh, for the WebAssembly function we have code start and also have the uh, reuse uh, the cache ones right for the code start it's a few I think for us we it's only like uh, less than ten uh, milliseconds. And then for the like, the, if we use one from the cache, it will be like less than five milliseconds. 
uh, compared to with like with container or something, right? Yeah, the container like the the like when I say the mini thing, it's the actual data that we get. We like you know bring up like, all these things that are happening like within like a few uh, milliseconds. But for container, it's usually uh, like more than uh, you know more than t uh, ten milliseconds. It's definitely way uh, longer than the WebAssembly functions. Yeah. Any other? Yes, please. Yeah, Rust. Yes, yes. And Western Match actually, actually it is uh, using C++, but they have like the uh, the like Rust uh, SDK, so that you can use the like, Rust code to call uh, Western Match. Oh, I see. Okay, so the you can see that the, for the same time is something that we have right now because they are using uh, you know they are using Rust everywhere. Almost every component are using Rust, but in our case, it's Western Mount Ray. So the Ray project it actually compile using Bazel, and uh, if you want to compile like the Rust project using Bazel, then there are a lot of you know like headaches for you to uh, solve. So for example, like uh, for when you use the cargo to build Rust code, then there are like some like build .rs which basically execute it. Uh, at like at the compile time, but for Bazel, uh, you know, it's uh, like it's hard. Basically, it's it's hard to integrate these two concepts, and it will be not very easy. So that's why we choose Western Match. That's uh, one main reason. Another reason is that uh, for Western Match is uh, they have the plugin support, so you can have different plugins, and then it will be easy to have your own plugin and each extend it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Oh, sure. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, mm, that's uh, the the thing that between different teams. So like some teams, they are actually yeah, they actually the team that are using you know like the proposing the, the different uh, framework. They actually we are trying it out, but there are a few small issues that we need to resolve. But our future goal will probably you know like make it plugable. We can make it either using uh, Tokyo or using our internal like the uh, different like the, the frameworks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you everyone for coming. Mm. Yeah, have a good day. <laughs>